uh, which is this one here. Um, so who's the most important? What well, who is the most important person in the trust? Uh, as you can see, I think the final result was the trustee at forty eight percent, which is nearly fifty percent of the of the votes. Um, and that was actually the correct answer I was looking for. So so well done if you are uh, uh, in that. If you pressed uh, on the trustee, then fantastic. But obviously, fifty percent of 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 the people that voted and another 50 people that actually made votes um, thought it was either the settler or the beneficiary. So uh, it'd be good to go over uh, why is it a trustee? Um, there may be a lot of confusion as to, you know, trustees are good, trustees are bad. Um, I certainly back in the day did think that trustees weren't the best, probably the best people to deal with. It just depends on, on what aspect of, um, of, uh, trust you're dealing with but for straightforward um trust from a perspective of protecting your assets where you're in control um then the, the trustee is a very very important role to to understand so i'm going to go through that um now so just a bit of a, a brief recap i think that'll be really worth worthwhile um or maybe even something brand new to you i don't know um of how of trust dynamics shall we say so let me just uh make sure you can all see my my trusted pen and then I'll, I'll just uh, start writing. So just the basic dynamics of a trust. So I'm, I hope you can read my doctor's handwriting. Okay, so trust dynamics I call it. And so a trust is set up in, uh, in terms of the basics, you have uh, the three main parties or offices, which are, is a set law. And we understand that the set law is the one that uh, settles or creates the trust okay um and how that's done uh they effectively have property that they own um so they place that property into trust and they must own the property so they've got to have um full what we call rights uh title and absolute interest in the property in order for it to be worthy of being in trust. If it's not, uh, then really the settler doesn't own it, so they don't have the right to put that property in trust. So then if, if you weren't aware of that, that's rule number one. Now, uh, the trust must have a manager or someone who kind of oversees or looks after it, and that's the trustee, okay? Um, and there's also beneficiaries or a beneficiary and who, who enjoys uh, beneficial ownership. Now, when a set law actually places property in a trust, what happens is uh, that trust, if you like, um, splits the property. So if I just draw this box and call it property, uh, by placing the trust, it kind of splits the property. It's not in half. I'm just doing it for conceptual reasons. Uh, so the title is divided. And so we have an equitable title and we have what we call legal title or possessory title. And so um, the tenancy, shall we say, is split into equitable title and legal title. So the equitable title goes to the, the beneficiary and then legal title belongs to the trustee. So the, I think it's given away the fact it's a legal title and he, the trustee must, must be seen in, in so-called public and so the trustee is the, is the face of the trust, uh, the representative of the trust, the manager of the trust. Um, all of the kind of the, the, the mechanics of the trust um, for it to proceed, for it to work, for it to operate, all of that rests on the trustee. So it's important that, that you have a trustee who's competent, who's obviously trustworthy, who understands how a trust works, who understands the dynamics of the trust, the rules of a trust. Um, I'm going to do a teaching separately on on what actually is a private trust because I think there's a lot of confusion around there. But just to keep it simple, um, no, he, he's the so-called public face. Okay, so if uh, anyone wants to have a discussion regarding the trust, it's the trustee that would be the the mouthpiece of that so-called entity. All right, um, and the beneficiaries in a completely different world. Uh, they reside in a, in the jurisdiction called equity. 
Uh, they're not technically recognised in the in the in the at law or legal jurisdiction. That's the trustee's job. And the fact that the tenancy or the title of the property is split in two, that's why it's protected, such that the beneficiary can enjoy the use of the property and the trustee looks after the rights and obligations of that property. All right, so that's effectively what's happening. So if we go back to our trust demonstration here, uh, the trustee is doing the job, the beneficiary is enjoying the use of that property. Okay, but anything surrounding that property in terms of uh, maintaining it, its upkeep, repairing it, paying any taxes, uh, if taxes are due, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, um, belongs to the trust. The trustee's job is to do that. All right. So that's a, a very whistle stop, quick overview of, of a trust, the dynamics of a trust, how a trust is supposed to be working. Um, and so that's why I've asked the question, well, who's the most important or what's, yeah, who's the most, most, most important party in the trust? And it wasn't a trick question. You've got to understand that the set law creates a trust. Once a trust is in play, the set law really is nowhere to be seen. His role or her role is now longer, is now fulfilled. And so they're out of the picture once the trust is in play. Okay. So you've got to remember there's like three different hats or offices. Once the settler's done their role and set the trust up, I sit there out of the picture. So once the trust is active, the settlers, there's nothing to do with the settler anymore. Okay. It's only between the trustee and the beneficiary. And the most important party really is a trustee because uh, the, the beneficiary depends on the trustee for things to happen. All right. Um, if the trustee is uh, incompetent, uh, dishonest, selfish, nowhere to be found or seen, then the beneficiary has a very hard time of enjoying the property that they need to enjoy. And that's a whole other world of, of trust that <laughs> you don't want to get into. So it's important that the trustee understands what's going on uh, and they understand their role to protect this trust and to protect the, the rights and enjoyment of the beneficiary as per the, the wishes of the set law as much as possible. All right, so that's a very, very quick uh, overview. I think I've got a couple of comments. I'm going to have a look here. Um, so it seems that we can, uh, I can check some comments, which is nice. Um, so yeah, so the, the actual um, answer is the trustee. So well done if you've got the trustee as the, as the answer. And I've just explained really why uh, we, you know, the trustee is important. And I want to do some more trainings on, 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 on around this and going to get, get a bit deeper. Tonight, it's just a, a more of an introduction. I've, I've, I've not been around for well, pretty much most of last year. Um, for various reasons, I've been extremely busy. Um, but it's nice to be able to, to share. It's nice to see the group is still active. It's nice to see that people are still inter interacting and, and the group is growing, which is fantastic. And I'm just going to kind of get involved more in that as well. So um, what we're going to do now, and if you have questions about this, you know, feel free to post it um, and I'll pick it up again uh, later on um, if I haven't covered it already this evening, okay, or, or today. But at least it's kind of a quick overview. I don't want to make it a very long uh, live, uh, but we'll, we'll get into more in-depth training going forward.